We will cover today how to activate the no subscription repositories for Proxmox step by step. This guide is intended for personal use. We will begin with the configuration using the GUI interface. I will demonstrate the error message that appears from the shell command. When you execute the update, you may encounter unauthorized error messages while updating the Proxmox repositories. These errors are typically related to the use of subscription repositories by default, resulting in the Proxmox update not being applied. Navigate to your Proxmox node and select the Repositories menu. By default, Proxmox will use the subscription repositories. Next, we will add the two No Subscription Repositories by clicking on the Add button and selecting the No Subscription Repository. Now, we will add the second No Subscription Repository by clicking on the Add button and selecting the Ceph Quincy No Subscription Repository. We have added the two No Subscription Repositories. Now, we will disable the repositories that are no longer needed. Click on the repository named Enterprise and then click on the Disable button. Next, click on the repository named PVE Enterprise and then click on Disable. We can test if everything will be updated properly by going to the shell command and executing the update. We can see now that we no longer receive the 401 unauthorized error message. If you prefer, we can go over the manual process of updating the configuration file. By editing the file, you can observe that the repository is now commented out with the sign at the beginning of the line. In step 2, open the second file in your editor. You will notice an added line at the end of the file specifying the PVE no subscription repository. In step 3, we will validate that the Ceph Quincy repository has also been updated. Ensure that the enterprise repository is commented out with a tag at the beginning of the line, and a new line is added for the no subscription repository at the end of the file. By executing a shell command, we can once again verify that the update will be executed properly without encountering any error messages. At the end, whether you do it using the GUI interface or the command line by directly editing each configuration file, you should end up with these repositories activated and disabled. This completes the tutorial. I hope this will be helpful. 